Hello and thanks for watching this Cloud9 ARP Solutions video and subscribing to our YouTube channel. In this series of videos of Acumatica 2022 R2, we're going to talk about side panels for stock and non-stock items. So on the right hand side, you can see as we're highlighting different items here, we have a side panel which shows us the form. And we can make this and resize this any way we want, but we can see these different items and their profile across the right side of the screen. We can also access different tabs and make changes to this item. Now this is great, we have one tab here. Acumatica is using the side panel functionality, which we can do ourselves. Take a look at our side panel videos. We have several of them about how to create a side panel from a inquiry screen and how to do it from a form screen. The techniques are different. But if we jump into the actual item profile, on the right hand side, we have different side panel tabs. So one of them is item sales prices. So this will show all the prices for this given item if there are any built in. So Acumatic always has a price, a default price that you set, but then there's a base price you could define as well. So you've got the item sales prices and item vendor prices. So these are prices that are specific to vendors. And you'll get a list of them and you'll get that price. But moreover, if we go to inventory stock items, you'll see a lot more information. Again, as we're looking at a stock item, you can see the stock item profile, it won't open it. But if I go into a inventory ID and we look at the profile screen, you could see a number of pieces of information on the same screen. A lot of customers ask me, well, it would be nice if I could see all, for example, the prices on this screen rather than have to go out and Acumatica has a menu option. And in the past, I would say, well, it's just a click away. So this is a click away also, but it's on a side panel, so you could see it at the same time. So as we're looking at the Acer laptop, if we click over here on the side panel, item, sales, prices, we could see all our different pricing. And if we move this over a little bit, you can see that we have a base price here and maybe we want to move our columns around, but we have a base price of $500. We have a customer price for a bartender of $475 if they buy three of them. By the way, that was effective in 2015. We have another customer here with a similar break. We have a price class for wholesale, where if the customer buys zero, Wholesale customers get 475. They buy three of them, they get 450. So all of this information is all relevant and easy to find in the side pin. Additionally, we could see item vendor prices. So all our different vendors and what price we pay to purchase those items. These, by the way, are all screens you can see if you have the rights. If you don't have the rights, you don't get to see this information. We have our inventory summary here. So this shows availability and stock amounts by warehouse and location. And you could filter that down and pick a specific warehouse. If you have serialized items, you could check this box here. Here you can see inventory allocation details for this item. So we have, again, we passed over this item to the inventory allocation details screen. This is a screen that's already in Acumatica, but we're conveniently locating it on a side panel to the right of the inventory item profile. So this screen gives you on hand, so you got total quantity here, what our available is, which is based on our availability calculator that you can find in the item class, what calculator rule we're using. But in this case, we have a sales order that's booked so we got 260. We have a sales order that's booked, quantity one, and we have a sales order that's in ship right now, quantity two. So those three are taken away from our on hand at 260. Additionally, Acumatica breaks it out by plan type. So what is the plan type? Well, that's what we talked about just a moment ago, the SO booked and the SO shipped. 
And we have all sorts of different plan types. If we change this filter to all records, you can see the non-relevant ones. And those are SO allocated, SO back ordered. You got inventory issues documents, maybe an inventory issue document, which is normally automatically released, has a challenge. It ran out of stock at the same time when you were shipping it. But a kit assembly, sales order to purchase, sales order to drop. All of these different buckets can contribute to the deduction of the availability. Now that is to say if the availability calculator is including this. That's what you see here, these check boxes. Also the addition contributes to increasing the availability. Maybe we have purchase orders that are at the loading dock and we're just getting them into the system. So if we click all, you can see all of those here. So purchase orders prepared, purchase orders. We don't include those normally in the calculator because a purchase order might take a couple of weeks. We don't want to think of those as available. But purchase order receipts that haven't been released yet for whatever reason, we'll include those in the availability. You can see those details there and inventory receipts as well. Now for clarity, these allow you to double click and open up these sales orders or purchase orders, whatever the record is, that's contributing to the change in availability. Inventory transaction history gives you the life of this item from this start date, that is. We can change that back to an earlier date. But the life of this item, every document that this item is passed through, this inventory item, and what's its beginning quantity, quantity in, quantity out, and the ending quantity, and the cost at that time. So very, very useful information. Notice the links, you can get to these documents and see specifically by looking at the document, then you could track down who did it and all that. Additionally, there's other options here. You can filter by warehouse and location. You can do summary by day, which is nice, because instead of looking at it per document, you can see it per day. So if you're trying to track something down and you know it went off after a certain day, I know my ending quantity was right at 592, but what happened thereafter, this is a good way to look at it. And you can see unreleased also include the landed cost and the unit cost if you want to. And then lastly, this is dead stock. We have a YouTube video on dead stock. Acumatica added this feature within the last year but it shows us the quantity that's been sitting here and how long it's been sitting here. So take a look at our video on dead stock for more details on this side panel tab. So that's it, that's stock and non-stock side panels. You could see those from the profile or the inquiry screen. And if you have any questions about this or anything else Acumatica, please feel free to reach out to us. If you enjoyed this video or it was helpful, please click like. And thanks again for subscribing to our YouTube channel and have a great day.